This is your host, Sapna Bhatia, and welcome to TFR. Let's talk about Kubernetes. This is a special series of the show for KubeCon and CloudNetyCon. And my next guest is, once again, David Safay, CEO of Trilio. David, it's great to have you on the show. Good to see you again. Thanks for having me. Uh, the theme for this year's KubeCon is Resilience Realized. What exactly does that mean from the perspective of Trilio and you? Yeah, good question. We're, we're really excited about the theme overall. I mean, as you've seen it firsthand, right, this cloud native space is evolving so quickly, but also the, the adoption from a multi-cloud perspective. And, and really what that does, right, it creates a whole new line of, of vectors or injection points into, into a, a company's application, right? So the, the, the need for resiliency or data protection becomes more and more uh, important than ever before, right? Uh, attackers are trying to, to frequently kind of, they're trying to penetrate a backup system either through administrative consoles or through the storage media, right, itself. They're trying to modify a point in time or encrypt a point in time and, and before an organization even knows it. Right, they've lost data and they won't have the ability to, to, to really recover. And so, you know, data protection really needs to be at the forefront of, of, of every conversation, especially in the, in the cloud native space. You know, and lastly, I'll, I'll kind of leave it off, leave it with this, is that what we've seen in this market is the number of people that are about to go into production very shortly uh, is increasing at a significant pace. Um, it's, it's great for the community. It's great for the end users, right? It's great for, to, for people that are finding efficiencies through cloud native applications. Um, so these are really exciting times. Getting started with a new service and everything else is great, but you know, continuity is what matters. Also, when we do talk about overall service, no offenses, but an app can come and go. What really matters is data. That is the real asset there. We have also seen a kind of spike in attacks, whether you talk about ransomware, whether you talk about compromised infrastructure, and a lot of things are either social engineering or it could be, of course, uh, uh, one of the biggest thing is misconfiguration, right? And third is, of course, there are bugs which lead to those. If you look at cloud technology technology.com, Kubernetes, you know, now it's moving into production, the adoption is growing which also creates kind of, you know, uh, where we should start getting worried about it as well. Uh, so if I ask you, uh, as you were alluding to some things that, you know, adoption is growing and also like, how concerned are you that uh, we should uh, take data, you know, uh, production even more seriously? Uh, and when we look at our infrastructure, we should not just get, you know, worried about or focused on protecting our apps, but also look beyond that. It's something that we really try to address in this uh, latest release uh, uh, of uh, TVK 2.5. You know, um, this recent release, uh, we've added things like multi namespace backup support and other storage targets such as, you know, Azure Blob and GCP, et cetera. But really the big component to this release was around ransomware. And to your point, right, the ability to protect that, that data has become uh, hypercritical. Um, you know, I've done a lot of cybersecurity work in my career and we, we really took a, a hard look um, at this emerging problem. And from the pers perspective of, of a, the best approach to deter things like ransomware, uh, we in this latest release have adopted a zero trust framework and uh, aligned to a lot of NIST standards. And what that means is that we've we've adopted a, a number of components. And that's things like identify and protect and detect and, and, and mitigate and, and recover. And all these things include a host full of, of features and capabilities like multi-factor authentication and scanning and deep logging, et cetera, right? So protection of that data becomes paramount. And so uh, to take it one step further, right? We've, uh, we've now included immutability right, where Trilio engages the S3 object locking mechanism. So even if your platform or your, your, your clusters have been uh, compromised, the hacker can't delete or, or modify your backups. And uh, 
I'd also say, in contrast to what other vendors do, uh, our approach to encryption uh, is really, uh, we leverage key management systems today. So the end user has the encryption keys, right? So think of it kind of like a, like Bitcoin, right? Keys equal coins, and the key holder has access to those coins. Just like your data, you should have control and protect the data as you want. Again, aligning to a, a zero, this zero trust paradigm that, that we're seeing. So um, the need for this is, is more important than ever in protecting the application and its associated data from the start uh, has to happen today. And when we're talking about data, actually you and I met at OpenStack Summit uh, years ago. Uh, nowadays, uh, data is in big massive data centers, you know, which is big giant, you know, all the resources are available to you. It is also at the far edge, you know, where resource constrained devices, they have, you know, bandwidth, you know, limitation. But the beauty is that Kubernetes is kind of everywhere. There are lightweight Kubernetes distributions all the way from Rancher, SUSE, uh, Canonical, Mirantis, they're all there. Uh, data is also there, but data is there far, far away from you. Uh, from TVK 2.5 or from Trilio's perspective, is that edge also in your radar? And if it is, how different is uh, the need or challenges for data production at the edge versus your on-prem data center or cloud? Yeah, so that's a really good question because you know if you look at the adoption of uh, edge computing, a lot of edge technologies, right? It's everywhere and people don't even realize it. It could be whether it's uh, your retailer, right, in your POS system, or it could very well be uh, a telco that's looking to, to push, right, applications and data and computing to, to that edge. And what we did was, you know, uh, everything that we do with our Trillia Vault for Kubernetes application is meant with flexibility in mind. Uh, the solution is completely agnostic on a number of levels. We are distribution agnostic, as long as you adhere to CF, CNCF standards. We are storage agnostic, NFS or S3 uh, storage environments. We are cloud agnostic. And then we are also agnostic in, in the sense of however you want to build that application. So it may be labels, it may be Helm, you may be using other distributions that require operators. We will, we will provide data protection throughout. So as people are adopting additional technologies and additional techniques to push applications farther to that edge, they should have a peace of mind that they can recover perhaps that application or that data or curate and pull a point in time back and identify what is happening at that edge. Or perhaps even, you know, the conversation around stateless applications. Well, you know, the, the thing is, I've had a number of conversations with CISOs around the world who talk about things like drift, right? Just because I've published and pushed an application that's meant to be stateless, what's running at the edge may not be the case, right? There, configurations may change, uh, et cetera, along the way. So how do I capture that runtime state compare it to what I initially wanted to produce and show, show the, the delta? And then take that runtime state, recover it perhaps into a sandbox and start scanning and forensically going through this stuff, right? Again, you start pushing things to the edge, there are more attack vectors. I need to protect at the edge. I need to recover at the edge. I need to be able to monitor and forensically go through that applica the applications and the data at, at the edge. There was so much to unwrap in what you said, and it also kind of shows that, you know, if you look at cloud native, cloud native is less about a thing, it's more about doing things in a certain way, uh, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and a lot of practices that are there can also help a lot of, you know, IT or DevOps challenges there. So if I ask you, that uh, as you folks do a lot of work outside of just cloud native, I mean, actually the thing is cloud native to this word is that uh, uh, what are the challenges that are there for IT teams or DevOps team or DevSecOps teams or SRE teams, you know, the rules and paradigms are evolving over time. Uh, and how can Trilio help them irrespective of what label they bear on their shirt? Yeah, that, so that's a really good question because 
you know, what we've experienced now is that with this cloud native landscape is that the approach to lifecycle management uh, of an application has changed. Lifecycle management of an application has now become a team sport, if you will. Uh, and so it doesn't matter whether you are part of the DevOps team, your SRE, GitOps, or your IT ops, right? It's about managing the, 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 the application. And so from a Trilio perspective, I go back to flexibility, right? I am developing the, uh, the best solution in the world to allow you to have point in time reorchestration. And whether your needs are backup and DR, or if it's from a security perspective, or perhaps it's from a, in a DevOps world, a test dev environment, you have to have that flexibility. And also when you, that flexibility comes in how you wanna consume our product, right? So uh, going back to the DevOps people, we, will, we, have, uh, we have CLI that you can absolutely use. Uh, from the IT ops world, we have a UI. So whether you think in workflows or you want to leverage CLI, it's entirely up to you. Now, going back to that flexibility, the, the onus is on us and on my team to make sure that we work in a number of different environments. So over the past year, not only have we gone at lengths to make sure that we certify ourselves across a number of environments such as OpenShift or Rancher or Tanzu or Esmeral or Mirantis or even DigitalOcean, just to really name, name a few. Um, we've also had to take a step and make sure that flexibility is there to consume a number of uh, perhaps items or solutions that you're currently using uh, prior to the need to upgrade to an enterprise caliber solution. So what does that mean? This past year, uh, we released the ability to consume and monitor Valero-based backups, as an example, right? Valero being a um, an open source-based uh, project that allows you to, to back up things, label-based applications. And really quickly, the community, as they make their way to production, has found they need more of an enterprise class um, solution. So we now give you the ability to consume those Valero-based backups, monitor uh, what you have in place, but also graduate with our, with the Trillium Vault for Kubernetes platform to an enterprise caliber solution. And again, with all that flexibility in mind, one of the one of the other things that we that we've empowered uh, people within this um, within this team approach to do is, um, you know, I mentioned before the requirements to whether you're DevOps or IT ops. Well. From the DevOps perspective, um, we've taken a step to enhance DevOps workflows by integrating Trulia Vault for Kubernetes with things like GitHub runners. So now you can uh, you can um, you can take production data, marry it with code check-ins, and to test that application and that point in time all along the way as you're developing. So there are a number of great use cases for point in time reorchestration and uh, it requires a platform with flexibility and agnosticism uh, to do that. Excellent. Uh, one more thing that I want to talk to you about is that uh, in the DevOps or cloud native world, we always talked about, hey, breaking down those old silos. But the fact is that we have kind of created new silos, right? When we say SRE or when we say DevSecOps or when we say that. So, um, which also means that within an organization, uh, when it comes to data protection or security, it de depends on how you are labeling it. The buck stops at a certain team or it should be an organizational problem. Uh, so how do you look at it? Because there is a technical aspect, you can provide them with technology, but you have to also help them with the cult cultural transition as well. So, so what are you doing in that space? That's a good question, right? Because this is a, um, I think it starts at day zero. Um, you know, the Trilio's ability uh, to create point in time records really needs to be part of the, the uh, design and the approach to developing your cloud native application. Yes, people are running to developing a cloud native application because they needed to do this one thing right away. 
But if you make that, you you go and you develop that application, and then all of a sudden you start thinking about a day two uh, initiative after the fact, or as you're sprinting towards production, that's one other element you need to throw into the mix that you have not been building and testing for all along the way. So the conversations that we've been having with, with people, with architects and CTOs, is that it should be part of your Kubernetes stack. So the conversation starts in the very beginning. Resiliency starts in the very beginning, right? And then we go from that day zero conversation to your day one and starting to build and test and deploy and Trilio and our, our capabilities are there for you to, to leverage all along that continuum. So whether you're, you're a DevOps individual that wants to leverage TVK and leverage it for a certain number of, of, of things, TVK should be part of that framework as that life cycle continues. And as that, that the, the, the time that the application finds its way to production and IT ops says, we have some governance things that we need to make sure are in place, whether it's backup or disaster recoverability, um, how do I do it? And we've been there. We've been there from the start. Cloud Native World is not about going there solo or going alone. It's working in an ecosystem, a big ecosystem of partnership. Uh, how important are partners for Trilios? And if you can, you know, also uh, share. Uh, some exciting use cases that you've worked with your part through your partners. The ecosystem is hyper hypercritical, right? Um, uh, for for us, right, as I mentioned before, we we go to great lengths to make sure that TVK works with a number of envir environments. From a you know going back to our conversation around security, right? The NIST framework allows enterprises to work with NIST compliant vendors for a really a comprehensive ransomware uh, approach, or rather protection against ransomware. So our aim is to become a, a critical component to that ecosystem. And once you're part of that ecosystem, there are a number of other, uh, not just use cases, but the ability to leverage the goodness of Trilio. So now whether you are, let's say you are uh, the DevSecOps team or you are SOC as a service or um, uh, and you need to monitor in uh, the health of an environment, you now have that visibility and that that transparency that, that you've always required. So ecosystem is is truly important to us. Can you also talk about are there any specific industries that Trilio caters to? Because you know we look at public sector also. There, I mean, data production is everybody's problem today. Uh, and if you can share some, if you have new customers that you have gained. Um, this is your time to talk about them as well. Yeah, so you know, as I mentioned before, we've seen this kind of uh, this rapid approach uh, recently into into production with a number of environments and people raising raising their hands, asking for data protection. Um, you know, I'm not at the liberty to discuss a, a number of these names, but I can I can tell you that uh, our customers um, are some of the world's largest global software providers. Uh, our customers are some of the world's largest defense manufacturers. Our customers are some of the world's largest telcos. And all these people are adopting cloud native technologies. All these people have a need for not just data protection, but application mobility, the ability to take a point in time and move it from test dev environment to production, or take an environment and capture it from uh, public cloud and pull it back down on-premise and repatriating some of that data in that application. And so a lot of these large environments that we see uh, uh, approaching us have been at it for quite some time. And a lot of these people have um, environments that span different distributions, that span different approaches to building applications, and span different storage environments. So again, that need for flexibility to give and empower an end user, whether it's you're the VP of IT or if it's that single tenant, the ability to manage your applications across many clouds, across many environments, and that flexibility to port that application and its data, right? Data gravity is a really big thing. We are unhinging that. 
we give you the ability to take the application as data and move it. You know, one of the things that that uh, that in response to some of these large customers is you'll be hearing about our approach to disaster recovery, the next phase in our approach to disaster recovery coming up this this uh, later this fall. Um, we will give the end user and the empower an organization to push data everywhere and have that continuous restore capability. So your recovery time objective is seconds or minutes. This is a really challenging thing in a multi-cloud world. And now we'll empower financial service organizations, we'll empower you know, uh, defense manufacturers, we'll empower a number of these environments with the ability to quickly recover as needed. David, thank you so much for once again taking time out and talk about uh, the work that actually is doing in data production in the Kubernetes space and also to help the whole IT teams and diverse teams. Uh, I wish we could have done this in person, but hopefully next year. Uh, but thanks for your time today and I look forward to our next conversation. Thank you very much, Swapnil, and good to see you. Stay safe and I look forward to seeing you in the future as well.